uh, Saturday evening in Houston, Texas at legendary WW Thorn Stadium. All right, the uh, Generals are going to come in with a uh, one and three record. They dropped. Uh, they won their opening a season opener against Fort Bend Austin, twenty to fourteen. Fell to A&M Consolidated, sixty-two to seven. Lost to Humble, thirty-two nothing, and then really played a thrilling old school defensive slugfest against the Nimitz Cougars in their last district game, which uh, was a scoreless tie going into overtime, which I don't think I've ever seen actually and uh, Nimitz won on a field goal in overtime to take that win and uh, they are coached by Wayne Crawford generals uh, two years ago surprised everyone by making the playoffs had their best season in many 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 years and I know that uh, last year's team coach Crawford was saying had where they're playing a bunch of sophomores now those kids are juniors so he's starting to get a little more uh, experience on his squad a little more veteran leadership and so the generals are definitely uh, a team that's maybe trending upward a little bit and the uh, the Mustangs are gonna come in with an 0-4 record uh, they they have lost games to Grand Oaks, Waller. They dropped a tight one, 34 to 40, to Sam Houston. And then last week they lost their district opener uh, to Eisenhower uh, by a score of 65 to zero. They are coached by Hank Semler, uh, you know, a good friend of mine. As as many of you may know, I, I was the uh, former head football coach at these Aldine Mustangs here before uh, before Hank Semler. So was able to talk with a lot of the coaches in the press box up here for the game some guys you know that I worked with and I have a ton of respect for so you know it's, it's been it's been tough uh, for the Mustangs but I you know we're hoping that they can uh, just just dig deep and find a way tonight to, to really take this game down to the wire and see if they can be in it in the fourth quarter and find a way to win I mean, we saw that last night a game that Nigel Davison and I called the Davis Falcons in their homecoming game were trailing 21 nothing to the Eisenhower Eagles and they were just kind of clawed their way back into it in the fourth quarter, sent it to overtime, and then they, they ended up winning that game. 28-21 in overtime to get a huge district win. So, you know, anything is possible. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to it. I'm excited personally, number 58 uh, for the Mustangs, Xavier Gordillo, his younger brother Raul, played for me when I was at Aldean. He, he, Coach Summer described me as, as uh, Xavier Gordillo being the best player on the team. He is a three-time, uh, see, a three-time powerlifting uh, champion in the district, and he's the guy that everyone looks to whenever the going gets tough. He's a three-year starter. Um, you know, he, he he's the guy that they look to. So that that leadership is going to be huge in tonight's tough game against the Generals. All right, set to kick it off. Number sixteen, Jose Guerrero going to be a high hanging kick and we fielded it around the 10 yard line fielded cleanly working back towards the middle got to see him he's going to crease just got the kicker to beat and Guerrero is going to bring him down that's number 23 for the Mustangs Davon Davon Brown great start for the Mustangs now you see the MacArthur defense coming out there they're led by number 50 a guy that I know Nigel and I are very fond of. That's Xavion Starks, the senior nose guard. He's he's kind of the heartbeat that leads that defense. We've seen a 3-4 defense last night out of both Davis and Eisenhower. Now, MacArthur plays a 4-2-5. See, a little bit different. See, four. Oh, they're sending the blitz on the first play. Going to toss it out to Davon Brown. He's going to almost get to the corner, but he's going to be upended by number two Justin Williams gonna bring up a second down 11 yards to go not a bad call and you know if you're you saw both inside linebackers blitz so if they're gonna blitz up the middle you want to go to where they're not so not a bad call but just unable to gain the edge there run inside handoff balls bobbled and eventually gonna be falling on great push by the offensive line as far but I they didn't, they didn't quite account for everyone they the guys that they did get the double team on, they're able to move uh, in a quarterback for the Mustangs is Jonathan Fields. That, that's a change. The game that we did uh, last week against Eisenhower, Constantine Marin was the starter, but he has a wrist injury, and so he is out tonight for the Mustangs. There's the inside handoff. Davon Brown, he's going to be hit and stood up 
for no gain by number 15 for the Generals, Lawson River. And that's going to bring out the punt team. So the positive field position uh, for Aldean unable to take advantage. Looks like number 64, Oscar Cortez, set to be to deep snap here. Uh, end over end snap. It's accurate though. Nice punt. Good solid punt. A lot of hang time. Angling to the right and out of bounds. A good punt there by number 10, Jorge Placencia. The nice thing about those punts that go out of bounds, of course, is you're going to limit uh, the return yardage. So MacArthur will be set to scrimmage at their own 35-yard line. 10-13 left to go here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. All right, here come the Generals. I'm going to start out of the gun, two backs in the backfield. Stretch play. Aldean's there, but can't make the tackle. Cortez not there. Getting the edge. Oh, the corner lost the edge. And that's going to go to the house for a touchdown. First play of the game. Aldean's going to uh, give up a 65-yard touchdown to number, yeah, number one, Jason Crampton. And that one's frustrating, Nigel, because the defense was there. Number 64, Oscar Cortez was able to get, get through, just couldn't break down and make that tackle. And, uh, yeah, the corner out there, he, the corner's always got to force the ball back inside. It yeah. loses the edge, and that, that's how you get a touchdown in your first play. Yeah, very, very, not how you want to start the game for Aldine. McArthur, you know, that's a great start to your first, <laughs> first draw, first play, so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Alden had the nice kickoff return by Javon Brown, and then it just kind of went downhill from there, went yeah. backwards on their first three plays. Got a good punt from Placencia, but then just to give up. You know, we've seen that quite a bit in the Eisenhower game, like a lot of just one-play touchdown drives. Yeah. The big plays, that's, I know that's that's a huge thing you want to eliminate. You know, if you can make somebody drive the field, you have a better chance because at least if they're driving and you get them down to your goal line, you know, you can make a stand. But the big plays, you just – you can't stop. That's, you know, mm -hmm. it's going for touchdowns and everything. So hopefully we see better from Aldine coming on later. Yep. Guerrero set to attempt the extra point. Snaps down. Kick is away. And it's good. Ten minutes left to go in the first quarter. MacArthur 7, Aldine 0 here on Flow Sports powered by Vibe. Alright folks, Mark Arthur getting ready to line up and kick it. Yeah, you know Nigel, the thing we've seen with Aldean, their defense really struggles on the perimeter. It's the edge. Yeah, the edge. You know, and they just, I've talked so much about how good their powerlifting program is, and they're, they're not bad on the inside. They have strong kids, it's just the team speed, there's a big differential if their yeah. team speed versus a lot of the teams in the district, and so you can just see a play like that just able to easily out sprint them to the corner and, and get a long touchdown run exactly. whenever you see all these long touchdowns it usually means you maybe have some uh, team speed issue yeah and then you think about it coach i remember last week remember they they started to run a defense where they were selling so out to the edge you saw that end kind of look like he was a db just because they didn't want to prevent anything from outside so i think they might have to line up back in that again just because you know it's such a differential there Mhm. Mm i agree Going to be fielded. Going to be another good starting field position. Davon oh, Brown again. Oh, got 
hey, that's that's good field position. That's yeah. going to get you almost to the 45 yard line. And um, and I, I don't know if you you know you were, we were had a little bit of technical issues, so I don't know if you had heard, but they're on their backup quarterback. Oh, wow. uh, the starter we had last week, Constantine Marin, in, injured his wrist. And so number oh. seven, Jonathan Fields, has been taking the snaps. So. so that's probably why we saw them earlier coach lineup in that formation. Could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the, last week we saw them. They're pretty much almost entirely out of the gun. This week we've seen a little more eye formation. I was talking to the coaches in pregame. It might be about 50-50. Yeah. Uh, but it, they're definitely just trying to slow down the pace of this game for sure. I agree. Check out the right tackle, number 58. That's Gordillo. Gets, Gordillo gets a nice block on the linebacker, and that's going to spring a nice little run. I, as good as advertised. Yep. Xavier Gordillo. And that, that's the thing. When these teams, we see these teams that are struggling, even on, the, on these teams, there are individual players that could play for anybody. And number 58 there, the right tackle, that's Xavier Gordillo. He's one of them. All right, going to bring up a second down and six. MacArthur showing blitz. They're getting aggressive. Kind of a high snap. Yep. Oh, oh, they're. I think they're going to say, "Yep, they're going to say uh, Jonathan Fields was down." All right, Nigel, I like to ask you this all the time. I mean, you're you're in a situation, you're you're struggling offensively. You got a third and long here. What what are you thinking is, is your best path to success here? Hey man, coach, I, I think this is always works at the high school level. Screen, screen. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you on that, especially because MacArthur has been pretty heavy blitz, heavy blitz yeah. early on here in the game. Think they could get a good execution there. Okay, Aldine making a sub. Oncoming is number twenty-two, Damian Paredes. That's that's a guy that Coach Semler is always very high on. Under the fumble, the snap, and going to be brought down. It, they're trying to run the naked bootleg. Uh, naked bootleg, just where you fake the run and the quarterback tries to what we call boot, like go the other direction with it. Hopefully, catch the defense. Uh, being too aggressive, stopping the run, but the, the fumbled snap threw off the timing, and then num number 55, Carlos Flores, or excuse me, number 55, Johnny Martinez, is able to make the play. Okay, Jorge Placencia got off a good uh, punt on the last play. We'll see what he can do here. Are they still missing somebody? They only have 10. They're going to have to take time out. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a, I'm going to just make a read here. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. From graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. All at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right, so Coach Semler frustrated. Uh, they as they started with only nine guys out on the punt team, ran one guy out late, but still was short one. So those are the kind of mistakes you just you can't have. You can't have that, Coach. You know, just just the discipline thing, knowing where you're supposed to be at the time. I remember we had a huge thing. Oh, oh blocked. A huge block. We had a thing, Coach, when we uh, play. We called it the launch pad. So if you were on special teams, you made sure to get your butt on the launch pad. So you can know where you're at. And, and you saw one person was hurt or something, that next guy will step up and fill in on that launch pad. And you can see the launch pad. It's there on the 50-yard line. You know They have one. But I, I think the issue is, since Aldine is so thin, mm -hmm. there's so many of their guys are, like, in, right? Yeah, you know like you know what I'm saying? They're not like it's, it's a new, fresh 11 guys yeah, coming in. So I think that's the problem. It, it's still early in the game, so I don't think a lot of injuries have happened yet. But that, that happens a lot where injuries during the game happen, and suddenly... The guy who's the backup on your depth chart, he's out. And his backup is out, too. So you're yeah. just literally just kind of grabbing somebody <laughs> and throwing him in there. Yeah. Uh, going to start at the 20-yard line here for MacArthur. Under the center. We don't see that too often. Inside handoff. There's a cutback. Going to bring – be brought down just inside the 10-yard line. Tackle made by number 20 for the Mustangs, Matthew White. But, yeah, you're – I mean, you, 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 you can't have those kinds of errors and then – they were trying to do a rugby-style punt, a rugby-style yeah. punt uh, where you kind of take your punter. Traditional punters just catch it, step, punt. Rugby, you kind of run out to the side, allow your your coverage team to get some time to get down there. But 
you take the right <laughs> angle, you can get a block on that anytime. So that's what happened there. Aldean showing blitz. Oh, a little bit of early movement, but I think they're gonna let that one go. Quarterback's gonna keep it. Nice. Good job there by uh, that uh, White again. Second time we called Matthew White, number twenty. Turf Monster kind of got the tackle there, but yeah. but White was in position <laughs> we'll, as well. We'll take the stat for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we would definitely take the stat. Coach seems to be bringing the guy who blocked the punt earlier, number forty, bringing him into the game. Playing that fullback spot. Yep, going under center again. Iso play. Oh, great block by him as well. Yeah. Aldine fighting near the goal line, and I think Aldi Aldine's going to be able to hold him short of the goal line. I Good. Venegas. Venegas there, yeah. Good job by Aldine though, fighting. They're scratching and clawing. That's going to bring up a third down. So huge, huge right here. They could get a stop. stop. I imagine MacArthur will probably try to punch it in on fourth down if they yeah. get stopped here, but it, it's possible. Hey, if you could somehow leave the situation 7-0 or even 10-0, that's, that's a win for your defense. Absolutely. Man-to-man -man coverage for the Mustangs. Sneak. Sneak. Yep. yep. Ah, got right through there. Yep. And MacArthur will score on the quarterback sneak. That's number five, Darius Hicks, the junior quarterback. Well, homecoming, you know, not off to a good start. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's been it's been a tough season for Aldean, and I think it's it's tough that the other, the other schools, I mean, are are playing pretty good right now throughout the rest of the district. Um, I'm really curious to see if, if, you know, traditionally we've seen DeCaney kind of beat the Aldean schools, but I want to see this year if, I think there's a couple that can beat them. So I'm, I'm really excited to watch yeah. DeCaney play more of the Aldean schools. Yeah, it's just, it's just crazy, you know, because last night we saw Eisenhower lose to Davis. It's just like, what I saw from the DeCaney team the other day, if Eisenhower plays like that, and I, I'm not sure, Coach, but yeah. if Davis plays like that, it'll be a good game. So it, it just really just depends on, what teams we're seeing, and, you know, ultimately how everything just really plays out. Okay, well, I guess we'll take a quick 30-second commercial break, and we'll be right back to the kickoff. Yeah. All right, we're back. Okay. Blowing vibes, vibe on flow sports. Uh, <laughs> mistake there. <laughs> MacArthur getting ready to kick it off to Aldean. Down 14 0, coach. Hopefully, you can, you know, try to find something that's going to work this drive and then kind of, you know, build the basis for the rest of the game off of that, maybe. Yeah, and, oh, that's got to be offsides. Yep, flag comes out. Aldine's done a good job fielding these kicks. I mean, they fielded them all they, clean. Ooh, big ooh. hit. Going to upend Ty Turner, the returner. <laughs> Ty Turner, the returner. Uh, Hicks on that hit yeah. right there. That's the, that's the... Well, I think that's Marquise Ladd. Marquise Ladd. Sorry. Yeah. Marquise Ladd on the hit. And um, I, I, with the Sky Kids, Coach, like, they're, you know, they're doing a good job, you know, fielding and everything. I just think, you know, if they're able to bounce and get outside, there's nothing but green and opportunity. So... They can, you know, somehow set that up to where they could get the the blockers to maybe wedge inside, and then they could just cut it outside. They'll have a touchdown right there. So yeah, no, I mean, definitely it'll be big to get a uh, a big special team side would help. Yeah, you know, because right now the offense is, is struggling to move the football. And okay, so it's okay. That's a, if y'all do you like that, you know, get you a free five yards to start. Yeah. And it looks like MacArthur's blitzing heavy. Like they are, they they know they have more speed, yeah. And so they're basically daring, you know, they're saying, "Hey, we know we're faster. We're gonna lock you up on the outside. We're gonna overwhelm you." I'll try to get to the. Oh, oh yeah. 
Smart. We're gonna do that. Yeah, we're, that, gonna, we're gonna gonna make them jump off sides. Then. There you go. Use the hard count. Yep. I I love that's good good coaching there by the Albany Mustangs. Yes, sir. Okay, to me, when teams are blitzing like this, my my favorite play to run is counter. You know, mm. you just get them going one direction, pin them down inside, pull, go the other way, and I mean that that's what I like doing. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard. I mean, they have a lot of guys in the box. Yeah. It's hard. Honestly, coach, why not take a passing shot too as well? I mean. You're already in the gun. Oh. You step back and just launch that thing if they're going to just let you play one, one on one, the man with no safety over the top. Yeah, I, I know. I, I agree with you. I just wonder with the backup quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't get to really yeah, watch. Yeah, we haven't really gotten. To I haven't seen him throw yet. Yeah. But they haven't yeah, tried yet. Press coverage at the top of your screen. Good run. It's nice. Oh. You know, we've seen, we saw even against last week against Eisenhower that number twenty-five Stanley Williams, you know, really shown out. So Aldean, Stanley Williams looked good. Davon Brown is checking in, had a nice kickoff return. I mean, they have a couple guys that can, they can get it done on the ground. I agree, coach. We we're really impressed by number eighty-two, uh, the sophomore receiver Desmond Dixon last week, but he's out with an injury today. I talked to the coaches about that. I'm gonna run the stretch play. Okay. Just can't get to the edge. I'm unable to get to the edge, you know. So I, I. That seems like we've. That's a recurring theme across a lot of teams. It's just yeah. so hard to get to the edge these days. It's just like Eisenhower, though. That's that's the team that can't get to the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Loves it. All right, gonna bring up a second down and long. I'm with you though. Like at some point. I think even with the backup quarterback fields in, you, you gotta you gotta test. Yeah, you throw you a little, you know. Bro, definitely, you definitely have to test the throw, just to really keep them honest, honestly, coach. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want them to adjust to their defense just to the run all the whole time. Oh, and he's just stuff right there. Yeah. Glad he's able to hold on the ball. It looked like the ball almost popped out for a second as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think right here you hit. You have to throw it, coach. You're down 14-0. What do you have to lose? I agree. Stanley Williams going to check back in for Davon Brown. A little bit of con yeah, just trying to get the formation correct there. Still man-to-man -man coverage from the Generals. They're going to blitz sprint out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, fake throw. Hey, you know, hey, you know. I like the play call though. Yeah. I like getting a field on the move to throw it. I think he's I more think comfortable. If he if it wasn't a sprint out, he could have set. He had a receiver down there. I think uh, number ten. He could have set and like stepped up into a throw, but kind of hard when you're already on the move with a sprint out to try and make that throw like that. So I agree with you. However, just as him being a converted receiver, I just think he's more comfortable uh, on the I move. Do, yeah. You know what I mean? I because in the pocket, it's it's collapsing fast because yeah, MacArthur because of the fact that MacArthur is so they feel that they can play total man coverage it allows them to blitz extra guys right yeah. so um, that's scary back there it's breaking down pretty quick a yeah. little bit of a low uh, snap no. Placencia just wow Placencia just kind of do like a matrix kind of kick oh they got it yeah it was supposed to grab that before wow. it bounced back <laughs> it's going to be a five yard punt yeah coach I <laughs> I don't think I've seen one of those in a while. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can I know from experience, you know, coaching at Aldine, a lot of our players um, just maybe they weren't involved in youth football, you know, at earlier ages, and you're, you're you know you're kind of learning the game as you as you come through, and sometimes it's tough in high school football, you know, against guys that have been playing for a long time, and um, I think that's why you see some of those kinds of things, like maybe you know a little miscue on a snap or things like that. It's just it takes time to develop those skills and. Uh, Hopefully, kids just continue to keep developing. Yeah, coach. And like you said, the good thing for most part, you, you're building a so solid foundation for. Oh, oh, oh balls out! Oh, oh, and all these. got it. Oh, it's hard to got say. It. Number three might have gotten on it from yeah. MacArthur, but all these got it. Wow, huge turnover! Way to, way to get a big break right here. With some good field position as well, coach. Yeah, you know what? I, look at these Aldine kids running off the field. That, that's what we saw, even in the game. Whenever they fell way behind against uh, against Ike, they they're out there having fun. They're look at the thirty eight, yeah, just no, coming over, high five, and coach like. They're 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 turned. They're having having a good <laughs> I know. 
even though down 14 nothing early in their homecoming game. That's, to me, the, I think it's a great coaching staff at Old Dean. I know a lot of these guys personally. They're just good for kids. You know, so they 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 know that they're not as competitive as they want to be, but they're getting better. They're playing hard. They're having fun. And that's what it's about ultimately. And run the ISO play. Look, Stanley Williams, a little bit of a cutback there, and he's gonna fight forward for a short gain. But uh, going back to the saying, coach, ultimately, you know, some of these guys uh, are sophomores and everything. So just getting them out here and being able to, you know, get some experience as your first year on varsity for some, and everything, you're building a foundation for the future. So. Yeah, and actually the guy that recovered the fumble, it's funny you say that, Nigel. I got my updated roster. That was Deshaun Daniels, only a freshman. Oh, wow. So, see, you're setting those found those foundation pieces for the future, you know? There's three freshmen on varsity now. And, you know, that's that's unusual. Um, but it's kind of uh, because of the depth issues. You know, I think Alden's put in a situation where they're going to have to move up younger guys and maybe they'd like to at the and time honestly you know if you this is this is a chance to shine i mean like i told you coach my coach always told me every play is an interview you know what i'm saying so you got a chance to go out there and show what you got hey take it man take it okay so we got a third down and six nigel this is the most manageable third down that, that alden has been in so yeah. what are you thinking here i would like to see another path i, I want to see i don't know if exactly the sprint out but definitely a passing in they're gonna run the stretch play man you know Williams Williams is really making something out of nothing he almost yeah. got run down in the backfield he's I think they're gonna go for it yeah this is the not? first time they've crossed the 50 yard line and yeah, nothing to lose they're gonna bring in Davon Brown the other running back Williams will come out definitely want to see that sprint out again though I think they need to throw it yeah. I, and, and just let's just just try to get one off yeah. you know here comes the pressure. Look at all the uh, generals in close around line of scrimmage. And it looks like time. Oh, there's a flag. Oh, coach, you Man. do not want that as the flag you do not want in this situation. Yeah, false start there. Going to back him up five yards. So Aldean will have to convert a fourth down, nine yards to go. You don't have Desmond Dixon, who was their leading receiver last week against Eisenhower. Yeah. And you don't have your quarterback. So your leading quarterback and receiver from last week are both out tonight with injury. Yeah. I think the good thing, though, you have that right tackle over there, so I wouldn't, wouldn't mind oh, trying to go over the there. The screen? Oh, I think that was a busted play. Yeah, that was, that, yeah, that was the right tackle. That was Gordillo. See, like um, one side of the line was doing one thing and another. Oh, side flag! That's gonna probably an automatic first down. Um, you know, Gordillo, he made a really nice block on the run, but I can tell he's still a little tentative. I mean, he's coming back from uh, an ankle injury where he missed several. You can kind of see him like gingerly walking back to the huddle. It's ankle injury for an offensive lineman. Yeah, it's tough. That's it's tough. tough. You drop your feet into the ground. Exactly. Every and it's, it's key getting those steps off as an offensive lineman. So. Agree, I told you he's a three-time district powerlifting champion in his weight division, and uh, okay, so I guess it was a dead ball. It happened after the stop was made on fourth down, so Aldean oh. will not retain possession. But yeah, you know, if Gordillo, he's a very strong kid, but it's just without being able to really trust your body and push off. I mean, yeah. he, you can tell he's tentative. And right yeah. there, he just kind of, he was in pass protection. He just kind of froze, and the defensive end was able to speed rush around him on the outside. Yeah. And Coach, I know from personal experience, with a, uh, I got a sprained ankle my senior year, and it was just it was very tough, like, just trying to plant off of it and do a lot of things because, you know, we did a lot of stunts and things, so it kind of affected that as well. So you kind of tend to favor your other foot more to try to get off and do different things so you could just, lead off of that other foot as well so inside handoff big hole gain the again gain the edge Ooh, oh wow big, what a hit big hit what a hit <laughs> alright gonna be a first down for the generals member of Nigel Davidson fan club coming in here uh, my aunt over here oh it's your aunt okay yeah she works here so 
I was telling her, you know, got a spot over here now with Vibe, and she's like, oh, I'm gonna come visit you one day, and I was like, okay, <laughs> and I guess she, she didn't get to see me yesterday, so she came by today, so shouts out to my aunt, one of the hard workers here at Thorne. <laughs> You know, Nigel Davidson is one of the hottest young names in broadcasting right now. I know we're getting some some recognition here on our broadcast, and oh, you can follow him at Nigel D yep. on Twitter. So, yeah, yep, yep. but yeah, that was nice. So, you know, I, it's funny. I I had the exact same thing. My senior year, I also sprained my ankle. It was the game right in the fourth quarter of the game before our bye week. So I was able to get the bye week, and so I didn't actually miss any games. But that first game that I came back for after the bye, yeah, it was our homecoming game. I had the, probably the worst game of my career. Oh, man. It was terrible. I just could not trust myself, could not plan. And even the next game after that, I still had a subpar game. Yeah. And then so the the game after that, I felt normal again. Yeah, so angle, that was about three weeks. It's so, it's so like, people will, like, try to, like, play. Oh, man, it's just a sprained ankle. That isn't it. Like, no, nah, it's pretty huge, man. Like, just trying to get regain that trust with it, honestly. Cause yeah. Because you, you think you have a certain limit when you're trying to, like, plant and do certain things, and but you're just scared to – you know, sprain it again because it's it's worse when you <laughs> you activate it again. So yeah, I, I definitely I definitely know how you felt on that, coach. Yeah, and you know, like you said, there's there's varying levels. You know, like there's that kind of maybe a little you're playing basketball at the gym and you kind of just tweak your ankle a little yeah. bit. That's different than when you're playing football and somebody falls oh, on your ankle. Yeah. yeah, you know, like that's that's super swollen yeah. and everything. Yeah, so well, we gotta watch out for that. Yeah, like gonna be a second down, three yards to go. As we go into the second quarter here, let me tell you about Academy of Sports and Outdoors real quick. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy of Sports and Outdoors. Shop in store or online at academy.com. And you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. Okay, spread set here. Looks like they're playing cover one. You see that one safety in the middle of the field, man coverage what underneath. Oh, that, oh, I don't know why they didn't stay in coverage, though. There's conf I think there's confusion there because to me, the way that the defense was set up, it looked like it was supposed to be man coverage underneath, but the. Linebacker out there did not stay in coverage. All right, going to be a third down, three yards to go. I think if I'm MacArthur, I'd work on my passing game. Yeah. I think running game, they can they can get kind of what they want. Uh, this is a great opportunity for Darius Hicks to work on his his passes. Oh, and they hand it off. You see what and I'm saying? First, oh, that's, can he get to the edge? If he and that's going to be a touchdown, touchdown for number zero uh, for the Generals. Demarcus Singleton. Yeah, you know, I just think I think MacArthur's in a position where right now they they can kind of get whatever they want on the yeah. ground, and it, you know, you, you still want to secure this win. And no game, we saw last night a twenty-one nothing lead yeah, get nothing is safe. <laughs> you know, but I would say if I'm MacArthur, I think it's also it is an opportunity to work on the nuance of other parts of my game. You know, because you know, MacArthur lost by three to Nimitz. I mean, they're right in there in the thick of things with a lot of the other schools in this district. So. Uh, definitely maybe something we'll see on the next drive. I don't know. Definitely. Snap. The kick. No one. good. Oh, All right. 11.47 left to go here in the first half. MacArthur 20, Aldine 0. All right, folks, we're back. Waiting on the MacArthur kicking team to get set. Audie getting ready to return it. The crowd is getting into it. You love to see that. At least, you know, the spirit for homecoming is still there. The crowd still cheering on there team you know and all the you know i think that's the great thing about them they're not going to give up or lay down so no. they'll be fighting until the end of the game yeah and i mean you know we've been losing at all for a couple seasons now or for many seasons and uh the, the thing is oh, oh wow. you yikes two guys collide into but you know we uh 
there's still great school spirit there, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of great people, uh, like Jeremy Gray, you were just talking about the band, like their uh, band director, Jeremy Gray, is a close friend of mine, uh, a guy that I really respected when I was at Aldine, you know, there, there's still a lot of people and all in the cheer and the vaqueras and the t- football trainers that, that are invested in these kids, you know, so they're still getting a good experience, I know that you might watch some of these games, see the scores get out of hand and think, oh, that can't be a good experience, but that's not true, you know, so, um, Honestly, coach, right. it just takes it takes a few guys, you know, just to change the uh, culture of the program. I know I um, told you about this. The college I was at, um, before we got there, they were kind of known for not, you know, being the best or everything. My class, the class 2016 class, we came in and um, really changed the culture around. We ended up winning a conference championship my sophomore year. And then the years after that, we went 8-2 and two and 7-3, and three, respectively. And we, we kind of changed things around. And now... They're known for being like one of the top programs in their district, so it just it just takes a group of guys. And hopefully, like we said, if we're seeing all these young freshmen and sophomores playing, if they power up and get together, you know, work hard in the off season and everything, start putting together and really, really getting a, a culture that we can see something change for the future. So, okay, they're gonna pull the right tackle and the wing back or H back around. They're gonna fight forward for maybe a gain of a yard. Going to bring up a third down. All right, Nigel, you got another. You got another manageable third down here after yeah. the good run on first down. So, are you thinking uh, sprint out, or you talked about screen, or what are you thinking here? Um, I think I think I want to see. I might go even just a regular shotgun pass. Just see, you know, three step. Just see who who can get open, honestly. Because they're giving you one on ones. Let's see it. Oh, oh gonna, just oh, drop oh, the boy. ball. And you can't have that. And I think he lost it, Coach. I think he was down, though. Oh, yeah, they caught him down. And, oh, I think, I think, well, I think maybe the, one of the MacArthur kids just said something. Referee threw the flag up in the air. Looked down. That's number 50. I think he's out of there, Coach. Cause he had a, uh, Did he have, it's a second personal foul for Xavion Starks? I think that might be, Coach. He's taking his helmet off in frustration. Interesting. And that I don't think you want to do, Coach, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, well, he got out early in this game. If that would have happened in the second half, though, he could have been missing the first half of the next game. Is that how it works? I, think so. I thought it was no matter what you miss. I'm I not sure. He, I am he not sure. Still miss. Oh, yeah. And that's even huger. If, if yeah. No coach. He's. A, I mean, to my opinion, he's their best player. Exactly. I. We. You and I have both been really impressed with Xavion Starks. Yeah. The, in this district, there's a lot of good defensive linemen. Yeah, there's like interior, like big guys. Yeah. We've we've really seen several that we've been really impressed with. Definitely, Elijah Sims, Savion yep. Sparks, got a got a lot of good good D linemen out there. Is that counter play again? Pressure comes, man. I I really like Stanley Williams. You know, he just does a really good job of kind of just finding ways to be creative and make people miss as they're busting through in the backfield. Agreed, coach. Okay. The good thing for Aldine is they are getting positive plays on first down. They're not going backwards on first down. Yeah. Going to blitz again and run the pitch. And there's a, that's just the little... Oh, MacArthur got it. Yeah, MacArthur. It's like the little ball handling things. And I think part of it is, I mean, on a short week, you got a... I mean, you have a, you're basically putting a receiver in at quarterback. Yeah. You know, who hasn't been working that all spring and, and fall, uh, getting reps, yeah. you know, handling, uh, just the ball handling back there, pitches, you know, handoffs, and yeah. definitely shows. I think even still, last week we saw a problem with the snapping as well, so that probably is coming into play. You know, just a lot of things to overcome for your Mustang, so. The guards are lining up in that double back set. They're going to hand it off. And Big hole. To the edge. Oh, that better on. job, though, by the corner. Hey, and I know it, it was a great play for all, but that, that's improvement. Because right there, we've seen so many times the corner would allow the runner to get outside him, but there the corner forced it back inside. That way you can make the tackle. And what do we say, Coach? If you force it back inside, your guys can come in pursuit and stop it. So. And, you know, I've been in these situations at Aldine where we've gotten behind in games. It's so like that, that's what you're looking for right there. Yeah. Just little moments where, like, hey, you're, you do one thing a little bit better and you're learning how to play your position. And that's, again, that's number 88, Deshaun Daniels, Just the wanna, freshman. want to build on the little things, like you said, Coach. Mm-hmm. All right, Aldine, maybe showing blitz off the top of your screen here. They are. They're going to 
thro uh, Darius Sexton oh, a load up and throw. Oh, Deshaun Daniels in coverage again. That was just a I'm, bad throw. Uh, I don't know if it was a timing thing with his receiver expecting him to be out front, but uh, the DB clearly got out front in there and almost picked it up. Because, like you said, for MacArthur, you kind of want to work these things just so, you know. Agreed. Once you get into these tougher district games, you're able to, you know what I'm saying, still have your passing game and be able to work as well. And you mentioned, uh, well, MacArthur going a little bit quickly here, so I'll, we'll broadcast this play, then I'm going to ask you the question I had. Okay, they're going to run the stretch play, force it back inside, tackle made by Ty Turner, number nine. Uh, for the Mustangs, a sophomore defensive end. You mentioned today that Texas Southern played their homecoming football game. Uh -huh. And I saw that they won 69 nothing. I don't know who they played. Uh, but I, just whenever I think about that, and, you know, I always think about Ja'Cory Howard, you know. And, and I was talking with, when I was talking to Mr. Gray, the band director. He was saying his son, Cash, used to love coming to the football games because he just loved Ja'Cory. And that, that's the kind of kid Ja'Cory was. Yeah. Ja'Cory was one of those kids that was the big man on campus and everybody loved him because he's a great kid. And you talk about, you know, it just takes one of those kids to kind of come through there and revitalize your program. And so, you know, maybe Deshaun Daniels in a couple years can, can be that guy. Yeah. There's the throw. Oh. Nice diving effort. That's Daniels in coverage. He got, he got beat. But, I mean, again, he's getting to go up against number three, Keenan Jackson, a junior wide receiver. So it's great. Great, uh... Uh, definitely great experience for the youngster out there. Yeah. You kind of tell he's a late call up, you know, like everyone else has like the single digit, you know, double yeah. digit <laughs> teens numbers. He's got 88. <laughs> Probably one of the few jerseys uh, left when he came up. Huge fourth down. Let's see if the Mustangs can get the stop. Fourth down, five yards to go. I said we got the motion right here. It's man-to-man -man coverage. You can see the defender running with him. Oh, inside, the runs the slant. Going to get inside right. leverage and beat him. Darius Hicks going to put the ball on the money. Complete to number two, Justin Williams, for the touchdown. 8.15 left to go in the first half. Generals are now leading by a score of 26 to nothing. Interested to see on this kick. Hopefully we can see if the kicker can get in. He missed the last one. So it's the little things, Coach. You know, you just want to work on this. So when you get in the game, you know, we've we seen a little one point can come back and hurt you. So, mm -hmm. so they appear to be missing somebody on the team. Uh, there he goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a flag. You can't, <laughs> can't be running on the field and uh, snap the ball and do it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta oh, try to beat the clock there, but yeah. you have to be set. You can't have that. Kind of remind me of that uh, fumble Ruski from the longest yard. You remember they had, <laughs> had a guy on the yeah. side acting like he didn't know it was going and then came in and yeah. did that. So it's pretty funny right there. And if you're coach, you got to get it. I, I think MacArthur's being too lax and just knowing that they're yeah. a lesser competition. You still you know, got to stay you, sharp. You got to stay sharp because – You'll get these bad habits and you'll carry them until the next week. Think you could just be lax and you play that lax against a Spring or Westfield or, you know what I'm saying, any other team yeah. like that, it'll come and hurt you. So you can't have those little things like that happening. Xavier Starks is in there, right guard. So I guess he was not. Oh, yeah, maybe he wasn't flat. Oh, their left guard moved. And then looking at the, today's game at Texas Southern, Ja'Cory Howard scored two touchdowns today. Ah, oh, man. Shout yeah, Ja'Cory Howard, two rushing touchdowns. So shout out to our beloved former Aldean Mustang. Had a, played a great game today. Dope to see those guys get to the next level and have success as well. This is going back them up. This might be what almost high played. snap. Uh, and the kick it. is good. All right, that'll make our score twenty-seven nothing. Eight fifteen left to go in the first half here on Flow Sports, powered by Vibe.
Back here on Vipe, Vipe on Flow Sports. Getting ready to kick it off again to make our third team. Audina set. 27 to 0 here, 815 left in the quarter, the second quarter to be exact. I've you know I've, I've said this uh, uh, many a times. I I would love we talked about this last week. I'd love to see Aldine run the option, yeah. or or so, or just some kind of just unique and we running thought, style. You know, coach, earlier we seen them line up in some I formation. We thought you know with the change, yeah, your, your main quarterback is hurt, Constantine. Uh, that will see something different. You know, just uh, something the simpler for your guys. You know, when you don't have as much talent, you're not able to really run these. High power offense. Right. So we thought we would see that, but the yeah, the problem is, you know, it's just it's not something you can install like from week to week. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it, they got to commit. They yeah. gotta, and it's it, it's hard, but they, if if they wanted to do that, but even still, I thought we'd we'll just see maybe just to avoid the the bad snaps and everything. Maybe just him lining up under center. Sure. But yeah, it's tough though because they they fumbled. Like, I think they fumbled like one or two like uh, snaps ah. as well. Not not they didn't lose it, but they had to dive on it. Yeah early in the game but we'll see they are going to start here out of the gun so kind of good this is their more their their base offense yeah and look at that They're, MacArthur's wow. just blitzing just not giving any respect if I'm all they call it, I think I just hey max protect let my wide receivers on two sides you're going to give me the one on one I'm just going to step up take a shot and I, I, I agree with you but I, w I will say this because someone who's been in this situation what happens is whenever you are in a situation where you, you the other team may have more talent than you mm -hmm. and you start taking those shots and if you're not completing them, it's a quick three and out, no time has gone off the clock, and that that's when like you can start losing like seventy to nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because you're giving the ball back so quickly and um but I, I, I don't I don't disagree because that's what MacArthur's giving you. They're saying yeah. they're daring you to there's a fumble. Oh, wow. Man, it's just... man. <sighs> I'd, I'd almost rather take a shot than just make these yeah, kinds of it's just, it's, mistakes. It's not working, man. I mean, at least I can I can live, coach, because I think <laughs> the the worst part if you're gonna get beat, you're gonna get beat. I feel like either way, second half we're gonna see a running clock. Yeah. So if I'm gonna get beat, I'm gonna get beat taking a shot rather than just playing conservative, just trying to kill time off the clock. So. Yeah. Because, yeah, even when you're trying to take time off the clock conservatively, you're, you're fumbling it and yeah, <laughs> giving you, the ball. You're so. making a mistake. So, yeah. I mean, at least if I take a shot, hey, something good could happen. So, yeah. We'll see. I mean, we still, we still have not seen, like, a – I don't think we've actually seen a – have we seen a pass, like, thrown? No, they've done a couple seen, sprint outs. Yeah, we've seen a few. I don't know if they've connected. Yeah. But we've seen them definitely attempt. Good job. Good tackle there. Yeah. That was nice the gang tackle. Yeah, 28 and 17 are That's getting off nine. the pile there. That's uh, Carlos Pena and Jorge Mayorga. Mayorga's only a freshman. Ty Turner as well on there. Yeah, great job there by the Aldine defense. Bringing up a second down here. Uh, uh, McArthur line up under center. Handoff. Let's see. Oh, good tackle from the corner. Right Again. From 27. Uh, Brandon right. Tostado. Nice. Like you said, Coach, those little wins right there. Yeah, agreed. Like agreed. See it. Curious to see what MacArthur lines up in here. I think they might go back to the gun and go back to that pass that worked earlier, Coach. I think so, yeah. That was a quick slant they scored on earlier, so that's yeah. coming from the top of your screen. Yeah, they might try to fake the stretch here and then throw it. No, they're just going to oh, give it on the stretch and walk yeah, into the end right zone. There. Number 26 uh, for the Generals, Coran Brown. I think now we're going to see your, your backups and everything start to get some play now, Coach. So we'll be seeing some foundation future pieces. Yeah. The thing is, though, you know, you look at MacArthur's sideline. The, they're kind of thin. They're very thin. Yeah. So I don't even know how much 
that's kind of the tough part. It, you know, sometimes you have to keep playing against their starters because they don't have many backups. Yeah. And it, you know, you could kind of it could kind of hurt you, you know, because you know somebody gets injured in a game where you're already up like forty something to you know zero. So so. Thank you, sir. As always, uh, in the second quarter, with the good people here at all at uh, Thorn Stadium bring us our our meal for the night. So we are very appreciative of that. Good hospitality. I, I, I want to learn his, I need to learn his name yeah. and then the the public address announcer here yeah. who we've known for years he is just amazing I mean you know I, I like to try to work on my radio voice here too but like his is just the next level he's got a golden <laughs> one I, I was talking to I think I told you about this so at a former job I used to work at there was a guy in right. broadcasting and it's just like those type of guys, they're able to just turn it on and off. And like you would look at him and you would think, yeah. like, just normally talking like, oh, this guy isn't, you know, that. But as soon as he gets on the mic, he's just able to <laughs> electrify yeah. you with his voice and everything. So, the, cool. the, the fun th- those guys. Yeah, the fun thing is him and his stat- statistician that's with him each week, they're big Astros fans. Oh, you look, wow. you look at them; they're always they're wearing, wearing Astros, Astros gear. gear. And so it's, <laughs> it's kind of fun, like, once you get into October and the playoffs, like, yeah playoff games are happening we're all kind of checking our phones and look over and kind of thumbs up at each yeah. other you know whenever. Shout out to the Astros. They yeah just, uh, AL. they clinched the aos that's right so ready to see what they do man okay a lot of people hate on us because oh oh muff right there yeah muff but eventually brought the down with his helmet off number five <laughs> like dark dark. Or is that number six yeah you, you went uh i know we were talking earlier because those scrunch stuff jerseys kind of can't tell if it's a five or a six there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. When I was at Aldean, if you notice, like, the Aldean Mustangs logo on the M.O. Campbell Center, it's kind of more of, like, a Columbia blue. Yeah. And a navy. So that's what they wore, like, kind of in the 90s when they were, you know. So I, I kind of brought back, like, that uniform mm-hmm. and that, that color scheme. So our, our colors were more like, uh, you know, like the Oilers, like a, a yeah. light blue. Um, but now the, they've gone back to the Royal yeah. Uh, here, and, but and the jerseys are very easy to read for yeah. <laughs> for us as broadcasters. The big numbers for the Aldean Mustangs. And we talked like last week. We saw like a, they had a different helmet. It kind of reminded me of BYU. It was like a a matte blue type color. So yeah. So I said the uniform team doing in there. It seems like uh, I, I like most of the teams' uh, uniforms in this district. You know. Yeah, they do a good job for sure. Yeah, I like MacArthur with the the gray helmets. I always thought that was dope, and you know. Even teams like um, we saw yesterday, Davis, they have some nice unis. So. Yeah, Davis going all red. Yeah. All right, going to run the stretch play. little inside-out move from Stanley Williams. Going to lower his shoulder. Man, Stanley Williams having a good game. Yeah. Definitely the bright spot of tonight. Unfortunately for Mustang fans, Stanley is a senior. So this will be his le- his final year out there on airline. Third, third down, three yards to go. Got a, the backup quarterback, Jonathan Fields, is calling signals tonight. The starter, Constantine Marin, sophomore quarterback, is out with a wrist injury. Hopefully we get a pass here, Coach. I think you just got to do it. <laughs> I, I agree. I think he's got to just take a shot. You know, they're going to hand it off to nice. Stanley. He's going to be almost run down by but Stanley Williams. Oh, fighting, fighting forward and run out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Yeah, I think he got that first there, Coach. Yep, he's able to get the first. Stanley's going to ask for a quick breather, and in will come in uh, Davon Brown, 433 left to go here in the first half. The Mustangs have some life, Nigel. Yeah, very very nice run from Stanley, man. Like I said, you keep moving those feet, something good is going to happen. So, pick a, pick a yeah. key guy who always did that, Coach, Marshawn Lynch. You're right. He always had a way, you know, they call him beast mode. He's kept moving <laughs> those feet, he'll drag guys and just found a way just to keep going and make big plays so uh, this time to Davon Brown and run the stretch play and he's running hard as well and they're going nice to eventually, yeah, eventually be brought down by number 24 uh, Rudy Reyes I still I want to see one throw I'm with you I, I am with you I, I want to I just want to see one yeah I want to be able to gauge you know what Fields has uh, in in his arm Maybe the co- maybe the coaches just know. Hey, we had to put him in on short notice. He's not ready to yeah. make these throws. But I, I just I'd love to see one. I like to see him, see him uncork one and just see what happens. You know. Exactly, but you know, I, and and kind of, I'm surprised they're having a good amount of uh, success right now on the stretch play. Yeah. You know, so I guess there's something they're going to keep up with. They're going to stretch again, 
And again, Stanley, man, Stan, uh, Davon Brown, this actually, nice little sidestep there. Him, you know, that, that works. But like you say, you want to kind of mix it up because you don't want to get too uh, too predictable now because then they'll start to set to that. So just throw in something Agreed. else maybe to mix it up. Here's their best third. I mean, it's going to be a third down and short. And they've had a lot of third and fives, third and sixes, but now they're in a third down, two yards. I would not run the stretch here. I, no, I just I think, think they're, they're, yeah. Matter of fact, it looks looks like okay. I thought they were going to kind of set more to where they think the stretch is going. They're showing the blitz on the inside here. Yeah. Oh, the fumble. Again, MacArthur gets it. Just tough coach. Yeah. Big Xavier Gordillo, the second team All District. I don't know if that was a tackle. handoff problem or did the. I'm just not yeah, sure. Yeah, handoff. Th th something was wrong in the handoff. Yeah. It's just... Oh, yeah. Davon Brown's upset. One of the players trying to calm him down. He doesn't want to be talked to right now, but... Um, it's tough, you know, you got a, uh, a wide receiver to convert to quarterback, so he's not used to really handing off the ball. I know we always say, you know, you stick it right in that, the running back's chest when you, you hand it off to them so they're able to, you know, get it, but... Yeah. It seemed like a little... I think there. I think the problem is um, Nigel is that you know MacArthur sending that overload blitz, yeah. so there was a free inside linebacker coming through, and I think that just I think uh, well, let me narrate this play, then I'll finish my thought. Uh, Hicks rolling out to his right, he's going to tuck it, he's going to try to lower his shoulder, but nice tackle there by number twenty-eight, uh, Jorge Mayorga. I'm right, he's only a freshman, so I'm going to I'm going to highlight that name, Jorge Mayorga, um, the freshman. Line, outside linebacker, and maybe that's something we can watch for. But that that linebacker was just coming through, and so I think that Davon Brown, you know, you can't help but help. You're hitting the hole, and you see a guy coming just completely scot three, scot free. You're starting to try to make your first move, and it messed yeah. up the handoff. That's why he, that's why we do need to mix in some of the pass. Yeah. You know, they can't just tee off on the yeah, run because it starts getting predictable, and it's like, okay, let's set to it. Nice. Oh. Ball, but Darius Hicks. Oh, hey, position in. Oh, oh, almost intercepted. Pick. Almost a pick. Number 17, Carlos Pena did a great job staying in the proper position. It's a Way to high point the ball. Is yeah. Well, it was a really pretty ball. One. Pretty spiral. But, uh, the ultimate coach, yeah. it might have worked out better that he dropped it because it will back them into the end zone. So Agreed. Oh, yeah. I'm with you there. MacArthur's going to get one more crack at it, though. 219 left to go here. In the first half, two back set here. Oh no, one back set actually. Step back. Setting up the play. screen to the tailback. Ah, uh, got some space. Nice tackle there. Tackle made by number four, Malik. Freshman, Malika. I will tell you what. These trio of freshmen that Aldine's rolling out there on defense, they're. You, They're coach, playing pretty good. Setting the foundation for the future. I mean, I'm just seeing because, like, what I'm seeing from them, they're not, like, uh, tippy-toeing around. Yeah. They're playing full speed, and they're diving to make tackles, and they're getting guys down on the ground. That's that's huge. And reverting huge. back to, like, I was saying earlier, in my college, it was a uh, – me and my pals, it was like a gang of us, especially on defense. Uh, we played early as freshmen, getting playing time in. So we started, like, something, set that foundation, and – Years to come, we all became like, you know, I had a friend whose safety became an uh, all-district selection. Uh -huh. I mean, conference selection, my bad. College. Yeah. Another friend, he was a conference selection. So, you, you know, you get early, you get that playing time, you start getting – I think the, the key thing when you're like a, a young guy playing on varsity is just getting that reps so you know and like it's so much anxiety and stuff, especially if this is like your first time moving up. It's a lot going through your mind. But once you start getting the flow of the game, everything becomes slower. You're able to read better. You're able to – do things better so you just gotta relax play the game some get to it after that coach you're, you're set to go so we're definitely gonna see something mm -hmm. from these guys in the future oh yeah i think that's gonna be holding call. yeah but we see the the ref showing his uh the yeah. ref showing his arm there <laughs> yeah that's a the, <laughs> it really the like uh <laughs> ref was gotta throw him a little slant right there hey yeah, <laughs> I think it's always funny you see a just black just flying like twenty yards down. The I don't know for some reason I'm just I'm just picturing like Peyton Manning back there like <laughs> I can see Peyton like in retirement just going and like refing the local <laughs> high school football game and just throwing darts out there with the flags. 
Remember that Saturday Night Live where, where he was playing with like the little kids yeah. and he, <laughs> he pegged <laughs> one of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah. So I gotta... I, I apologize. Sometimes when these games get a little out of hand, I mean, it's just... You, you kind of turn... Your, you know, you got to find other things to, to talk about and uh, that that's a good one, that Peyton Manning skit. Yeah, that's, that was hilarious. Well, that. All right, we're now down to one minute, 20 seconds left to go here in the first half. First and long, and, and uh, timeout will be taken by Aldine. We'll take it with them here on Flow Sports, powered by Vibe. receiver set coach on the right side yeah oh I don't like that coach if you look at the inside receiver he's not he's covered up oh gonna oh, throw the wow. fade oh and he had, had him beat a little, a little too far out in front and he knows it you can see the frustration from number two there Justin Williams Justin Williams and he had it you know, yeah, if you're holding, you got one minute, 11 seconds. If you can get into the half down 34 nothing, I mean, just just to get a stop. Yeah. You know, just get yourself one good stop. That'd be so huge for them. I agree, Coach. I'm surprised number 14, he ran just a little pop and stop route. Thought he would go all the way because nobody was covering him. Inside handoff, going to gain the edge. And the uh, corner, good corner forced it back in. So at least that didn't turn into a touchdown. Yep. Yeah. Ty Turner ends up making the tackle. Number nine on that tackle. I think that's, uh, that's a Ty Turner. Ty Turner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, Young guy. that's the thing. Like, there's so many, like, the, the age of a lot of, of this team, it's almost like it's like a JV yeah. team. You know, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. And, again, if they can just stay together, just stay stay in the offseason, keep, keep studying, keep hitting the weights, doing what they got to do, I mean – Coach, not to bring it back to me, but I just remember like that. That's exactly what we were like. My first year there, we were three and seven in college, and it was just like, all right, we see what we have to do. We know where we got to improve, and we made that happen. So it's possible, Coach. It's definitely nope. possible. A timeout's going to be ta or delay of game, actually. I think the biggest thing, especially like when you're a coach, is just getting those guys to commit and sell out and believe. You have to commit like we were there, off season workouts. You know what I'm saying? I remember it was times we would work out, you know, during the period, then we'll come back, finish whatever we didn't get done during the period after. Then we would go to the field and do some drills and different things. So you just got to sell out and really, really buy into it. Because if you buy, get everybody buy into it, big things can happen. So Yeah, big things can happen. I, I know, I, I think that at Aldine they got pretty good buy-in. I mean, I just seeing it at the powerlifting and stuff, and there are kids doing that. But they, they could also benefit from a little – I mean, sometimes – there's an old saying, you know, it's not the X's and O's, it's the Johnny's and the Joe's. I mean, yeah. you, you kind of, you need some, uh, just, just some fresh uh, infusion of talent, yeah. too, you know, to, to an extent. And uh, that it seems like they have some of that with those freshmen. Yeah. And, Coach, I think it's just, you know, I hear about you saying the power lift program, which is great. You know, you want to get the guys up in the weight room, but you got to put in that work on the field as well. Got to put in the yeah. work on this field. Maybe they're going to throw uh, kind of a deep out route there again, intended for number uh, two, Justin Williams. I think what I like about, like, Texas, um, most of the time, you know you got your spring ball and everything as well, but in the summer, a lot of these guys, they do seven on seven so they can work. This is how you get uh -huh. passing-wise, you know, you get your quarterback and receivers all on par at the right time. So I, I think that's a huge thing. I'll probably try to see if I can get my kids into that because once you get their relationship like that now, it just opens up a lot. 
So there's the flag, the flag route. They're going a bit to that back uh, pylon of the end zone, and it is incomplete, and the Mustangs get the stop. Huge. Huge. Hey, that's a huge, yep. That's a huge confidence booster. Five seconds uh, left to go here in the first half. I think Coach is calling timeout, so I think he might try to set up something. You know, I, I want to see. I would like to see the Hail Mary. I mean, like we said, nothing to lose. And I just want to see them just fly out, throw a pass, and take a shot for once. So hopefully they do something like that. Yeah. It doesn't appear like it. they're kneeling, so we'll see. Yeah, they're going to you know, try to run a play. So. They're running a play. Yeah, I would love to see this Hail Mary right there. Just take a shot, man. MacArthur playing way off. On their coverage, oh, another oh, inside handoff stand. bobble again. That's yeah, yeah that that'll that'll do it, cause I think uh, that's something they gotta definitely work on. So yeah, we'll take it to the half, thirty-four to zero, and we will be featuring the All Dean and MacArthur Band. Time to come. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show, and we'll catch you back when third quarter starts.
Our leader is Mary Martinez. Squad leader Victoria Juarez. Squad leader Daphne Ordonez. Dancer of the Week, Angel Oliveris. Brigade Bell of the Week, Melanie Kelpa. Officer of the Week is Eric Garcia. Major Jennifer Cortez Roman, General Eric Garcia. The Brigade Bell will be forming a hula routine by Happy. This dance is dedicated to the Brigade Bell Booster Club. We appreciate all you do for our team. The Brigade Bell is sponsored by the Brigade Bell Booster Club, Senior Rita Pica and Studio 59. Four seasons, three seasons. Aquas, El Oasis. El Toro Bravo, 4L Studios, and the Alumni of the Gay Bells. Please sponsor the Gay Bells today and help them on their way to compete for the Nationals. For the MacArthur halftime portion, the award winning MacArthur Jam and Generals marching band will offer you a show of music and marching as they perform their. UIL show entitled Gamer. Composed and arranged by Jose Antonio Diaz with percussion parts written by Stephen Orojo. The band is prepared by James DeVose, Jose Fuentes, and Catherine Ruiz. Percussion director Stephen Orojo and color guard director Rosie Perón. The band is led on the field by drum majors Kirsten Gordon and Monica Yukira. And now the all the other school district and the Carter High School with the superintendent, Dr. Latanya Gauti, assistant superintendent of schools, Roshi Rodriguez, principal, Shana Showers, and Dr. Yul Irwan. And Performing Arts Director Rufino Rodriguez proudly presents the pride of New York Senior High School and ninth grade campuses, the Jamin Generals.
This concludes the regards to the portion of the halftime activities. Thank you for your kind attention. We hope you enjoy our show. Color Guard choreography by Rosie Barone. Your halftime announcer has been me. Thank you.
remuneration plan. And as we continue to my attack on the table, we all begin to look together. Dr. Lohan and Dr. Superintendent of Schools, all the senior high school principals, Mr. Walker School, my current principal, Dr. Kimi Kawaii, Ms. Flores Bolivar, Lasa Asia, principal, Lucario Rodriguez, my hot star and Ms. Doce Rodriguez, Carla is an 18 and honest 
class has their life in high school. She wants to be a role model for her family, members of the student body alike, and also her friends. Her greatest desire is to attend St. Jane University, and her ultimate goal is to become a medical doctor. Carla Arizona. That is our Duke and Duchess for the sophomore class. Our junior prince is Damian Perales. Damian is the son of the NRV. His activity is to teach and continue 100 in U.S. history and English history, as well as 1850. He is a member of the Kindred Fathers of America, the varsity football team, the track team, and the tennis team. After graduation, Damian hopes to attend Texas State University and major in agricultural income. Damian Perez. Our junior prince is in Natalie House Nelson. Natalie House is at Love and Other Islands. Her distinction includes the top center member club, AP and Honorary Club, and she is a published author with the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. She is an active member of the Mustang Society. She is the cheerleading captain, secretary of the National Honor Society, a student council member, an Army band member, a U of H Young Dutch participant, a participant in the Emerge program, and a small business owner. After graduation, now we hope to attend college and pursue a career as a pediatric surgeon. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army High School Junior Class Prince and Princess. Next, we will introduce the finals for the 2021 Army Senior High School Homecoming Team and Queen. Our first finalist this evening is Delencia Janae Cleaver. She is the daughter of Jim Cleaver, who is very much alive, along with her best friend, Jamie Lee. Throughout her school career, Delicia has exhibited exemplary performance in academics and citizenship, as well as good attendance. She is distinguished as a student in the top 10% of her senior class. Not only is she academic, she is athletic as well. She is the captain of the All Senior High School Varsity Volleyball Team, a recent world graduation of the Senior College at the University of Texas in Austin. And upon graduation from college, she plans to open up a franchise for the U.S. Our second team finalist is Janet Guario. Janet is the daughter of Guario and Alejo Guario. She is being a 49 daughter of Baca Guario and her friend Patricia Lozano. Janet is a high-tech and a very self-confident and driven. Throughout her journey in the world, she has achieved perfect attention and is on the baby on her own. Janet is very committed to whatever it is that she is doing. She is the captain of the volleyball team and has been on the team for four years. She has also been the outfielder for the softball team for two years and the basketball manager for four years. Her goal and future aspiration is to attend San Diego State University and major in career one day, but come to a business. Our first final attendee for team is Andrew Castillo Jr. He is the son of Rosie Elena. He is the escort of this team by Christian Ayala. He is an academic decision for class of 2022 Zelda Court. He is a role in the credit, honor, and the AP class. He is the president of the National Honor Society and the public chairman of the United States. He is also a state band officer and a great president. And Brent has multiple local local organizations for future aspirations to attend one of the three colleges of choice, Yale, Princeton, and the University of Texas, and made an applied mathematics our second team final is Adon Yerseva. Adon is the son of Marianne Puckett and Arthur Yerseva. He is being escorted by his mother, Marianne. Adon loves visual art, 
his academic distinction is A.P. Braun. He is interested in very critical fashion, textiles, and clothing. His future goal and aspiration is to attend fashion design school and become a fashion designer and create his own clothing. Our final team of contestants this evening is Dayon Walker. Dayon is the son of George Terrell and he is being escorted by his mother this evening. Dayon He takes school seriously. He comes to school every day and, his, and has perfect attendance. He is a member of the student council. Wow. He has also been acknowledged by the National Society of High School Scholars. He is also a labeling. He has played basketball all four years his high school career. And he participates in track and field. And now, without further ado, the moment that you have all been waiting for, we will introduce to you the 2021 Albany Senior High School Homecoming King and Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 Albany Senior High School Homecoming King is Andres Castillo. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 Albany Senior High School Homecoming Queen is Delicia Jone Cleaver. Thank you for your attention 
and the people have raised you. Thank you all for your support and helping us to remain all being proud and just staying strong. Alright folks, we are back. Shout out to the All D and Arthur Man for a great halftime show. Getting ready to kick off. Big Arthur getting the ball here. Well, he had the ball first half to start, so he's getting the ball the second half to start. <laughs> Oh. Ah. Jesus Perez getting ready to kick it off. Uh, Had some pretty decent oh, kicks early in the first half, so hey, hey, curious to see where, where he gets it at this time. Huh? Number one, they're they waiting. The MacArthur, um, they ran out to do their uh, thing, their tunnel, and their had to get it off the field, so they're now getting that off, and they were just waiting for that to get the game started. So, that, that's off the field. You see the kick, and it's up, and not a bad kick. It barely tips out of bounds. I think they're going to just wave this touchback, so not a bad kick from Jesus. Don't touch me. Was able to visit with the uh, attendant, you know, that kind of looks after the press box up here at Thorn. Got his name, a uh, gentleman's named Irvin. So we don't I just uh, really appreciate the hospitality. He always brings us our meal each week. So it's nice to <laughs> put a name with the face there. So yeah, we, we appreciate the hospitality. They always treat us right. Our coach, we got a quarterback uh, change number seven now from MacArthur. We'll be okay. Starting this second half. Derek McNeil, sophomore. No, all right, there we go, young guy. He's getting the young guy some reps. Handed There's on. that freshman again. Well, couldn't get him down at first, but the first guy there was number four, Malik Cobbs. Who was it that cleaned that up? Uh, 21? KV on Atkinson, a sophomore. Yeah, young guy. 
He's been kind of all over the place today, too. So. Nice to see that from your, yeah. your future, like you said. Here's, I want to see what this McNeil has his arm strength or passing wise, you know? Yep. You can see a bit of that, hopefully. Ah, and they let him pass it right here. Hmm. Nice throw out. Oh, wow. Play. Oh, man. Nice jukes and cutbacks, and I think he'll take that great block by number two. And he is going to the house. Wow. Very dynamic. That's embarrassing. Man, it's like, you know, some of the... Some of the defenders from all the... It's almost like they're too conservative with their angle and pursuit. Like there are some. I saw one guy that could have come up and made the tackle, but he's already starting to like back off and take an angle to like make a touchdown. So like you, at a certain point, you, you can't just start retreating because then they there's nobody there to tackle. That's how, that's how he's able to cut back inside, yeah, you cut back outside. You gotta, you know, somebody's got to be able to to try to get him and the person who cleans it up. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Nigel's like, sometimes I get it that there's some, you know, when you get in some of these games and you get blown out, like, you, maybe it just scars you that you think, oh, I've, I've got to get back and make sure we don't get a touchdown. But, like, at a certain point, you got to come downhill in football and make the tackle. And that, that's what I like about some of the freshmen I'm seeing yeah. is that they're doing that. Instead of kind of waiting and trying to just take a pursuit angle, like, they're just coming down. Yeah. Um, but that that was – that that should not have been a, a touchdown on yeah, that play. But hey, cr you know, no, cr I'm not trying to take credit away, but th there's some things uh, that can be improved upon of the, the pursuit angle there yeah, for sure. Definitely. It's a singleton, you know. Yeah. That, <laughs> See that that juke to the inside and, and the speed was there. Outside. Yeah, the speed, <laughs> yeah, speed was there. Really, also credit to uh, number two, Justin Williams. That was a huge block. Yes. Yeah. I, I always say, it, coach, I love when you can get a receiver who can block because you know a lot of these receivers they like uh. They just want to look pretty, run the routes, and get the ball and everything. Those guys who can block, they can stay a long time. You can find yourself even in the lead, you know, because you got uh, teams like the Ravens who really run the ball more. But credits to their receivers, they're able to block, to, you know, ensure that. So I love me a receiver that can block, man. I think I crazy enough, you know, like Calvin Johnson, we think of him, you know, from his time in the NFL. But he started off in a – at the option at Georgia Tech. That's that's a great he was point. Known for really just being a really good blocker, so you know, you be able to do both, man. It's excellent. MacArthur kicking it off here. The high kick. Been seeing those all night. And it stopped I, right. There. I want to talk about that. I, I think it's a great point you brought up, Nigel. I love how you brought up Calvin Johnson in a run-heavy offense, who was still able to be a successful Hall of Fame receiver. Yeah. And it. It just makes me think, like, sometimes you would think, oh, I'm a receiver. I got to get my numbers. I got to go play in a spread. But, like, Calvin Johnson didn't see it that way. He went to where he wanted to go to school. I, I don't know all the reasons why I picked Georgia Tech, but it worked for him. And it, it reminds me, when I was coaching at Clemens, my first coaching job, our quarterback was Derek Carr. Oh, wow. The Raiders quarterback. And he was here because his older brother, David, was the quarterback for the Texans. And I'll, this is a good story. I'll finish the one after this play. Oh, we're going to see some under center now, Coach. Yep. Blitz again. That's the dangerous part. Is it's <sighs> man, it's just tough. They got the 40 lineman and they're blitzing. It's like you're kind of outnumbered on the run. But anyhow, so David Carr is playing for the Texans. So his younger brother, they're from California. They all both went to Fresno State, so they're from that part of the California. They came here for the Texans, and so we had him. We got him. He was playing at uh, Fort Bend Clements. Great kid. But I remember talking to him because at that time we ran a pro style offense, like I formation, you know, bootleg stuff like that, ISO. Another, one more play, then I'll finish my story. There it is. Oh, one guy away. Nice tackle by uh, River Lawson. Um, but anyhow, so I just said, I, I asked him, because in, in our district there was a school, Elkins was starting to, like, the spread was a little bit newer still, and Elkins was tearing up, setting records. I asked him, I said, hey, Derek, would you like for us to implement the spread so you can kind of get some, put up some of those same numbers like the Elkins quarterback? Because I'm obviously, you're very talented. Like, you could, you could easily do that. He goes, he looked me straight in the eye and said, no, coach. That's exactly what he said. He said, I want to play in the NFL. I want to work on these NFL throws. I want to throw deep, deep comebacks. You know, I want to work on you know moving in the pot. I want to work on the uh, you know sprint out, bootleg. I, I, and look at him now, and he is on fire this year. He's having his career year. Honestly, uh, you know, I 
know, I, I like to say I I feel like he got a a fairly bad reputation just because you know those in between years has you know, the Raiders have been very successful, but I can never do a period. Shout out to Well, but I still remember I always say this. Man. I think we got lucky in the going to be right now. At that, we got lucky in him getting hurt. He was an MVP caliber player that he got hurt and kind of took which he stayed and started. So, that year, he looked amazing just like he is looking now. So, it's going to be interesting to see what those Raiders do this season. I just pulled off a big trade. Am I? Oh, here we go. We're going to sneak it. Yeah, there's this. Oh, he got pushed back. Oh, second effort. Great second effort there from number seven, Jonathan Fields. And it looks like no. I don't know, coach. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to say it was short. But yeah, you know, uh, I just pulled off a big trade in my fantasy football league. I'm 0 3. I feel like I've got a really good team, but what? You know, I mean, I've got like. My receivers are, I got like Calvin Ridley, Stephon Diggs. I got like top flight guys who haven't really produced. So I'm 0-3, so I was like, I got to make something happen. I ended up trading several of my players for Darren Waller. So I'm hoping that Derek, yes, he is, you know, obviously the number two, consider the number two receiver behind, or tight end behind Travis Kelsey. So I'm hoping that Derek and him can have that good connection this weekend and I can finally get a win. Yo, yes. 20 targets. So, I mean. <laughs> I played against him that week. My oh, opponent wow. had terrible yeah. others. I lost. So, if he's on that pace, you know, I think he'll be able to do for the coach. Yep. All right. So, I, I, anyway, I just want to tell that story, man. I thought you'd appreciate that. So, right, yeah, Derek Carr, great kid. And that, that's what you find, you know, uh, Nigel, when you talk about the guys that make it to the pros, most of the time, you know, you find out, like, if I meet someone that knows a pro player, oh, what was he like? How was, what was it like coaching him? Usually it's, oh, he's a great kid. You know, because to make it to that level, it just takes so much dedication and work. And so, yeah, Derek Carr, no different for sure. Inter oh, somebody, okay, let's say there was a very overloaded set because the right guard and right tackle yeah, went to the left. I think, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, it looks like some younger guys. Uh, I agree. As well. oh, oh, almost uh, messed up there. Uh, oh, wow, he's able to still get the playoff. Crazy. Yeah, coach, we see some younger guys in the line as well. So, you know, like I said, I remember vividly my very first game of varsity, a lot of jitters and sure. anxiousness. So, when you, when you get in a situation like that, you're just thinking in your head, okay, don't mess up, don't mess up on that. But you need to just relax. Yep. Play your game and let it be comfortable. And over time, eventually, you start to get a little bit slower. And things weren't as fast paced and intense as it was. No doubt. Yeah, you're right about that. I always remember whenever I'd, I'd have a player that was maybe going up against an extremely good opponent, I, I would tell them, hey, guys like this, they live off intimidating other people. Yeah. So, like, they're used to intimidating their opponents, so the opponent is just a half step slower. I said, when you're going against somebody very, you, you got to just go at him 100% all game. Is that, you know, they, they're already good. Don't let don't let their reputation fool. You know what I mean? So, and so yeah, and I, I agree with you, man. When you're a first-time player coming up to under the Friday Night Lights, it's, it is something different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit more <clears throat> speed that you can take. Relax and let it go. Interesting set right here, coach. Oh! Oh, over the head. He's gonna throw it? Oh my god, someone! <laughs> <laughs> that was. <laughs> I love how easy. And that's what Demarcus Singleton had that long touchdown, the last one. You could, he's just a good football player because like, you can tell how easily he was. It was a totally yeah, busted play. Just to, just to play backyard football and yeah. hey, he saw uh, Jason Crampton coming open in the flat. And he tried to tried to put it on him. I like that. You could tell though, like I said, coach, this line is new. The yes. Other guys here, so it's a little problems with the snap, a little problems with the blocking adjustments and different things. So. I like that MacArthur's putting him in there, though, because, hey, this is an opportunity. And, and you never know. Also, like, injuries happen. Like, one of these kids may be thrust into that position where you need him. Oh, somebody coming out real late. Yeah. Yeah. Coming there like it's a bumble bruiser. So. We had a really good trick play one, uh, one year I was at Aldi, and we almost scored a touchdown on it. So w this was on our punt team. 
So it's third down, we get stopped. We have the guy run off, come like he's running off, and then I meet him at the sideline. Mm -hmm. So he's at, so I'm acting like I'm talking to him, he, but he hasn't gone off the field. Yeah. And so I'm talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, but he's still in the field of play. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was the corner thought that he was out, but he was in. You see what I'm saying? So it, we, we had this all planned, so we snapped the ball. He takes off. He's wide open. We just missed the throw. But uh, that was against Ike. That's a, that's Almost a, got a touchdown. That's a good play. I, I like that one, yeah, we, we had to be creative at yeah, that point. We yeah. really did. We're, anything we could do to score. I feel like I just referred it earlier to that longest yard. I just always think of that one. I think you can get a play like that and look, just, just catch them off guard. Mm -hmm. One of the good, uh, some other good ones, you know, is like the, uh, what I call like the freeze play. Uh, it was in the playoffs one year. I think it might have been like Pearland and Euless Trinity. But the, they just, they're all just standing there looking at the coach trying to get the play. But the center snaps it to the quarterback and so everyone just stands there. But the receiver takes off and they scored a touchdown on that. There's a screen to the running back. Here's the freshman going to, oh, freshman couldn't quite make the play. Uh, that was number 88 was in position as that freshman like Deshaun Daniels but he got beat to the outside and Jonathan Fields who's been the quarterback tonight is going to come in and make the tackle another one like Masai Yates Davis just didn't know how to set up for it most times when you just set up to it out of out of it right. they didn't set up yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of good trick plays that, you know, you just got to get creative and, and dial up sometimes. 25 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. This is probably the last play of the quarter. Okay, let's get him. Let's see him get the ball off. Oh, Ooh. oh okay. Oh. Oh. All right, that'll be the end of the third quarter. The, the school year is here, and Academy Sports and Outdoors have everything you need to have your best year yet. Stop by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com. Football, baseball, and other sports gear like helmets, bats, gloves, and cleats. It's never been easier to get back to sports with our wide selection of gear, great brands, and highly competitive prices. Academy makes shopping convenient with curbside and in-store pickup available for online orders. I think I might need to go to Academy Coach. I think we were talking earlier that that Astros gears, getting, getting gearing up for the playoffs. So yeah, I need to stop by getting some Astros. Gear. I'm with you. It, it, it's always fun when the weather starts cooling off. The yeah. Astros are in the playoffs. Everybody hates us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Man, so. I have a, uh, my stepfather. He works at the uh, stadium. And, uh, you know, he just tells me like events, like when the Dodgers came in town, how the fans were just, just giving trouble and everything. They are the so, worst uh, fan base, oh, in my opinion. Man. I they talk it. about us, but, like, they're terrible, man. Yeah, I mean, you see on, like, social and media all the time. I think the weirdest thing is, like, they're still so obsessed with us, even though they won a championship last year. Like, That's true. how are you not content? Like, man, yeah. we still deserve 2017 and everything. Oh, just, oh man, those, those guys there. We, we could get into a sports talk radio show about that whole sign stealing scandal, but oh, I man. that would get us up down a whole rabbit hole we could probably never return from. I still don't from. understand it, Coach, because, like, I, I tell everybody this. Baseball was a sport – Built on I mean, you know, pitchers who put pots on their gloves. Your your biggest era where you made the most money was the steroided era. So you have players down, taking steroids to get a But somehow us Did watching film you know, in football, we call that watching film. If I'm able to pick out your signs from doing that, that's just film for us. But somehow that's the cheating. So I I just, I just I, don't know, man. Yeah, I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, and here's the thing, like, and we have a player down, so we'll, we'll take, I guess we'll take the camera off of the player and we'll just kind of talk, we'll talk, we have a little bit of a break here, we can talk a little sports, I'm sure you guys are, you know, this game's gotten a little bit out of hand, probably you're a sports fan, we can talk a little Astros baseball, um, you know, to me, the the Yankees and the Red Sox had just gotten busted for similar things where they're using the Apple Watch to send in signs, so it's like, it's kind of one of those deals where it's, I think, MLB teams kind of thought, hey, MLB's not going to enforce this, I think the Astros didn't think anything would actually happen to them uh and then they i think the mistake they made was they ended up winning the world series so pressure started coming yeah. from, to penalize them uh, and coach another thing baseball is sorry unfair. you have no salary cap so you have teams like the yankees and red sox hey we got the most money i'm gonna go get the best player every year and where does that leave your smaller ball clubs yeah so it's 
the game is built on an unfair advantage. So to to penalize anybody when it could point out a hundred mistakes at different people, I just don't understand. And to me, this is why, like they say, baseball is like a dying sport. This is why I think it gets the reps it gets, because it's like, hey man, you had all these unfair advantages to start the game from the get-go. Now you're trying to enforce these rules of things when you still have this going on. Like, I don't know, man. It's, it's a tricky situation. You. So there was a holding call. It's going to back up uh, MacArthur to the 15-yard line. They're going to hand it off inside, bouncing out. Uh, two guys there, yeah. 43 and 20. So 43 is Anderson Torres, and 20 is Matthew White. But yeah, no, I'm with you, man. We got to get some Astros gear. It's time for the playoffs. We got two games left. We were uh, leading the Oakland A's tonight out down there at Bay Park. Uh, it looks like we we're definitely going to play the White Sox. If we win tonight, we'll clinch the home field advantage against the White Sox. So we want to make sure we get nice. the win. And, that would be very uh, nice. But yeah, so the, and then the Tampa Bay Rays are going to win the American League, and so they will face the winner of the wild card game, which is looking like it's going to be the Red Sox and the Yankees. So that'll be a Oof. pretty intense series. Nice. Nice run inside, dragging defenders into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, or oh, Junior, Brown Brown. All right, that'll make our new score. MacArthur 47, all being zero. And Nigel, looking ahead as uh, MacArthur sets up for the extra point. I mean, you've seen MacArthur take Nimitz down to an overtime game. What do you? What, how do you think MacArthur stacks up against Davis and Ike we saw last night? Honestly, though, I mean, early in that first half, we saw like a lot of discipline and penalties. So I think they played very lax today, just knowing they could out, out talent all team. So I'm not too exactly sure how they would stack against the Davis and Ike, in my opinion. But, I mean, you know, like, you, you just can hope that your guys, all right, we pick it back up, you know, going to practice. Hey, this is the team we actually need to, you know, put our. Times we can't just out time at them, so you could hope they do that and just prepare better to do so. But I think they play very lax, a lot of undisciplined early. I, I, I'm not sure. If I would give the edge, I'll give the edge more to an Ike or a Davis. So you, you kind of thinking what you saw last night, and we now we've seen all five Aldean teams play. You and yeah. I have from the games of broadcast. So you, you kind of feel like maybe what we saw last night that kind of was for the the class of the Aldean schools. Those were the two yeah. two top ones. I agree. Yeah. I, I think I'm with you there. I think Nimitz. I, I would also say, yeah, right. I'm seeing early right now. MacArthur. Th there's definitely a, a gap from. There's a drop from MacArthur down to where all these. Yeah. Had. I mean, if Nimitz tonight. had their quarterback Whitehead, I think it would be a different story. Good but point. Without yeah. Whitehead, it's just it's looking very tough for them. That's a great point. Also, as we look forward in district play with the Nimitz Cougars, they're one and zero oh and or uh, one and one in district play. But if they get Braden Whitehead back, could they be a yeah. team that could beat? Ike or Davis. I just wonder how serious that, because like we said, Coach, we saw him when he left the game in an arm sling. Oh, 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 we got, we got a shot here. Davon Brown, just the oh, kicker yeah. to beat. He's going to turn the corner. Davon Brown, sprinting to the 10-5 touchdown, Mustang. This advantage with a side kick. Yeah. It's so high in the air. It's taking so long to get down. You can't really make your contact to it's harder to defend, and like you said, if they're able to get it out the outside, they get the touchdown in. Yeah. All these Mustangs put points on the man. Dave on Brown, 70 yards to the house. Back to what you're saying, though, Cody. I'm just saying, Whitehead, usually when you have your quarterback in a sling, it's, it's like something's out of place or yeah. an injury like that. So I'm very curious. If they could get him back in district play, that would be very huge, but I just don't know. I saw him down there. I went down there to talk to Coach Slater and wish him good luck. And I saw him down there. He's a big, strong kid, and he was talking to someone. And I mean, he, he's got a. He had a good. He looks like he's in positive spirits, you yeah. know. So I, I hope that it's something where you know maybe just he needs a couple more weeks to rest. Oh, blocked. I think that was Xavion Starks that got through there, Nigel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously you would have loved to get the extra point, but that's that's it. Look at Coach Semler going out there, just getting the guys fired up. Happy to see them. You know, we talked about this. The thing with the Mustangs, like, 
obviously, you know, they're getting a little overwhelmed, but they're not shutting it down. <laughs> it's really impressive. They're going to the fat lady. Yeah, man. And Davon Brown, I mean, he had that, the opening kickoff of the game he almost took to the house, so. He's also a senior, unfortunately, though. I mean, I think, I think with those young guys, if you could just have Davon Brown and uh, the other running back, Stanley Williams, you could just have them for another year. Uh, you know, maybe Gordillo and the old. If you can have a couple of these guys one more year, a couple of what you got coming back, you, you know, you really might have a an improved team next year. But yeah, no, I I'm, I like everything you said about all that. I mean, well, coach, we're stating this, and they're to me, they're two best players. Right? You know, you know, yeah, we had two guys we liked last week, uh, uh, Desmond uh, Desmond Dixon. They're out. So yeah, you know, I think McCar MacArthur's got some talent. I think yeah. that you know. Honestly, with the top four teams, I think that they're all fairly close. Like, I think yeah. MacArthur can beat an Ike or a Davis. Um, I would think I would still say Ike and Davis are favored coming in. And it's just really hard because there's matchups, right? Like, the Nimitz defense is so good. You it's know. Just like, like, we see the other day, just it became too overwhelming for, like, the offense not to score. And the the it it, so it became too overwhelming for them to stop that and then, you know. Hoping their offense to score, so you know I really hope they can. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna be that's a bad face. Oh, 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 <laughs> I don't even know if that young man understands that he just did a big penalty. He's gonna. <laughs> nice. Wow, that but that's no. the most egregious face. And he put his. Yeah, I think he doesn't he came, understand. He came in with <laughs> the, the, the face mat. Like I think the coach is telling him. He's like, hey man, like. You came in with the face mask. I never seen that. Like usually, you know, you just like it's an accident. Like you just end up pulling it or something. Yeah. He came in like looking to tackle the face mask. Yeah, I don't know if you remember. Like years ago, there was there was face there's two varieties of face masks, right? There's the five yard invert and then the personal foul for fifteen. Like, they've done away with the five yard. It's only they only call the personal foul variety now. But that that was one of the most. Uh, egregious uh, like face mask I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, 445 left to go in the game. Uh, generals take over. Yeah, I, I'm really, I'm very excited actually, Nigel, just for uh, the way this district chase is going to shake out. Yeah, I definitely, man, that big candy game, that, that was crazy. Uh, I really like what we saw from the quarterback here. I'm curious, man, like you said, Westfield Greeks. Hey man, this is really looking like anybody's game, to be honest. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. little shoving battle there. Feels the quarterback. Like 88, uh, Stephen Perales. Yeah, you know, yeah it's, it's been a clean game, you know. It's just, it's fine. You don't want to get a penalty that affects your, you know. Well, let's look ahead a little bit to next week. Um, some of the matchups. I'll be out of town next week, but uh, Nimitz. Yeah, you're gonna hold it down for us. So <laughs> Nimitz is gonna travel to play Westfield. Okay. So that's not it. We won't be broadcasting that one. Eisenhower next week. Um, they're gonna be play here. You're gonna see on Thursday night. You'll be broadcasting Spring and Eisenhower. Ah, that should be a good one. Definitely be a good one. I want to see how Eisenhower, their short turnaround took in their game, so see how they bounce back. Hopefully they can try to pick up a win against Spring. That, that was a tough loss to Davis. So. See how that goes. Hopefully, Coach, I remember we talked about it because it seemed like they were just fatigued and a lot of their guys were cramping and everything in that game, so that's kind of tough to come back and play that Thursday night. Very short turnaround, so. You know, I remember the daily schedule for us, so it'll be Monday would be, you know, kind of overview of what happened in the game, and last that or that. We'll usually do like our stretching and everything, try to get all that soreness and stuff out. And Tuesday is your script, you know, you run through that. Wednesday is your, uh, your like overview, you run some more script and different things you can, you can pick up. And that Thursday, if you kick the building, you play Friday, but now with that day shortened. Yep kind of got to squeeze a lot into that Tuesday or maybe even Monday you might just say hey we'll do practice you know make it lighter since you know you're just coming off of a game yeah. it's kind of tough that's tough on a coach to to have that right after a, such a huge game like that sure so I want, I want to see how they bounce back yep and then uh, DeCaney is going to be playing uh, MacArthur next week 
So your, that game is going to be at the Caney, so we won't be broadcasting you that one. Uh, Davis is going to have Aldine. So you'll, on Friday night, you'll have Aldine and Davis. So might one, one might get a little out of hand. And then Eisenhower, did I say who they've got? Oh, yeah, they've got Spring. So that's so I'm actually... So no game Saturday? No game Saturday, I don't believe. Yeah, nothing on Saturday ah, for us. I feel like, so who, so we said, we said Westfield, um... Westfield and MacArthur, I believe. No, West, no, excuse me, Westfield and Decaney, or Decaney and MacArthur next week. Yep. So Spring and Eisenhower. Number seven. Aldine and Davis. Nimitz. Nimitz has Westfield. Okay, so... That's the one you got Thursday. Oh, so that's Thursday. Friday you'll have Aldine and, uh, Eisenhower. No, oh. no, Aldine and, uh... No, there's something's wrong, because you said Thursday was spring at Eisenhower. So Westfield Nimitz must be the Saturday. I don't know, I'm just going off max preps here. It's showing Davis and Aldine on Friday. Okay, so that means Nimitz and Westfield. Thursday. Okay, so that must be Friday. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna, they're kneeling now, so they'll be the last, we're gonna end the game here. I'm, I'm actually happy with that, that since I'll be out of town, I, I really want to be here yeah, for those other matchups. Yeah. I want to Nimitz uh, playing Eisenhower and Nimitz playing Davis. I want to see MacArthur play uh, Davis and Ike. And That's where Eisenhower be doing. Like I said, yeah. you know, Eisenhower's had the advantage of coming off that last game and like the issues they faced, which we just seen like fatigue and <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if it was a hydration thing, but the prepping, coming back and playing Thursday. So I hope they can bounce back to spring. Like spring, just like a hard fight game with Westwood. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting battle, so uh, I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, I know you won't be here. I'm standing on my own. Oh, you got, yeah, you I got it. I want to see how everything shakes out. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what? Uh, was it was it 42 nothing at half? So did Aldine only give up one touchdown? Yeah, they only hey, you know what? That's a little thing. Yeah, like the second said, half was a tie, yeah, then pretty much. Zero, zero, so. Yeah. Little win. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll. You know, for me, you know, I, I thought it was a good sportsmanship uh, for both teams. You know, uh, hopefully Aldine can just continue to improve, and, and hopefully this is a real competitive game for next season. But uh, tonight, you got to tip your cap to the MacArthur Generals, and they. They're a team that they, they still have a shot at that Definitely fourth playoff spot, no doubt. So I, I, I just want to see more discipline. Lax and I can kind of move back. All they were very lax. I want to see them tighten up, really play their game. See what they can do with this. Sounds like I can the team like that. So they still have a shot, though. No, Nigel, man, enjoyed it. It was a great weekend of football for us. I mean, our, our game last night was just an instant classic, man. I really enjoyed calling it with you. Uh, yeah, we take a week off, and then hopefully, I know we're going to have some good ones down the stretch for sure. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week for more football action. And have a great night. They are right now.